Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our compact, clean, and tileable blueprinting series where we keep things small, we keep things from clipping too much, and we keep it nice and tileable. Now I am going to start off by saying we are now in the Blueprint Designer Mark II. We've graduated, we've done all the buildings that you need for the Mark I. By the time you have manufacturers, you are either very close to or already have the Blueprint Designer Mark II, so there's really no reason to make one in the Mark I Blueprint Designer. I also want to add that now is the time where you could make larger versions of all the previous blueprints. You could make a larger smelter's blueprint. I'm guessing you can get eight, but maybe you can only get seven. I'm not sure. Uh, but all that to say, I will not be remaking all of the lower tier blueprints for the Mark II. I just think um, you guys get the idea of how to tile more of them. I may revisit the constructor blueprint because I was able to use some of the strategies you guys mentioned in the comments to fit the lift onto the end of all of the mergers you know when we had the eight constructors where they fed into the middle row of mergers and then there is a way to fit a lift on the end even in the mark one blueprint designer so i may uh do an extra video for that i'm not sure yet it'll be at the end of um doing all the videos i'll do the blender and the fuel generator and maybe some other things first but i may revisit constructors in the mark one but all that to say, it's easy to tile more things onto the end once you get the idea, so I'll let you guys make bigger blueprints in this if you want. But we're gonna go ahead and jump into the manufacturer design. I will say there's an option here. You can stack them all in a row, so you've got your four inputs and then the output on top. Or if you'd like, you can have the output over here. I personally like this version because it keeps everything together and I just I think I prefer that in this case and it's not like you save a vertical tile by putting the output over here because if you put the output here down a tile it clips really bad into the top of the manufacturer so you would have to have it at this height level anyway and I just like the look when they're all together I think it looks clean so that's how we're gonna do it but you you do have the option to move the output belt over here to the same height if you think that looks better. Other than that, let's dive straight in. All right, it starts as with all blueprints with our building. We'll pop the manufacturer in just kind of somewhere near the center. Doesn't really matter, there's plenty of space front and back and we can fit two of them. It doesn't sound like a lot, but often your builds with manufacturers don't need an absurd amount of them so two manufacturers is actually a pretty decent number i found i often want to build either two maybe four and every once in a while maybe six so you're gonna stack to two three four five six because your first belt is on this second level here and also i've gotten to mark six belts in my real playthrough so i'm gonna switch over real quick to mark four belts for my build because that's probably the mark that you have when you're first getting these and then of course you can do an upgrade to this blueprint once you get to mark uh mark five belts i do recommend that but that's not till aluminum which is pretty far away from when you first get manufacturers so i don't know why i built that belt that direction that is the wrong direction so you want to build all four from left to right here. Again, you can make these whatever direction you want, but I go left to right for the inputs and then right to left on the output, which is the top one there. So yeah, this is a pretty simple build actually. Um, you know, compared to some of our other ones, there's nothing too fancy going on here. We get the, uh, we get the lifts placed here and just kind of get them relatively to the right height. Here, it doesn't have to be perfect, just enough that the snapping will work. And then, at this point, I usually will jump up on top of one of these to get our splitters. And it's a little bit of a pain. This is where the hover pack is really nice. If you already have that, definitely use it, but that doesn't show up till a little later in the game. see this one you should have the jet oh this one's actually not wanting to snap okay so we'll do the trick we snap it to the merger and then you can snap or to the lift and then you can snap one in front a bunch of people keep asking me why I don't just use this and the reason is because I don't love the way it looks um, the items just going straight into the bottom there's not a visual opening on the bottom 
if they changed the model when you attached it to the top to open up the bottom, uh, I think I would like it a little more. And it also kind of looks weird the way it clips into the back. Again, they would need to change the model so that doesn't look so weird for me to like it. I'm not saying you shouldn't use it, but for me to like it, they would need to change that. Um, but yeah, so those are the inputs and then we will deconstruct the lifts and reconstruct them as usual to get all of our things actually connected. And again, something that someone has point. Oh, I put that on the wrong, on the wrong level there. Whoops. And of course now it's not going to snap. Um, something people have pointed out, which is a helpful tip is that if you are looking for verification that all of your lifts and such are connected it just make sure these green arrows and the orange arrows from the lift are gone um, these kind of arrows that you can see through buildings that represents a unconnected connection so basically you can just grab a belt and look around and you'll be able to see uh, what's connected and what's not so for example if i grab a belt right now you can see that there's no little arrows up here and that means that they're connected nicely so that's an easy way to verify i know i've talked about listening for the clicking sound that's obviously a way to verify as well but you can always double check so there you go nice and clean i love the way this looks it's really cool when items are flowing up and down on there and then the last thing to do is our output so this one, you're gonna have to climb it up. Let's see, that would be the first level. You go up to six beams, that's the second level. Eight beams is the third, fourth, and fifth. So you go all the way up until it almost is at 14 units of cost. So at the top of 12 is how high you want this one. And then I can't remember if this one Hooks up nicely? I don't think it does. Yeah, there's no merger. So we place our merger here, and then it should snap along the edge. And then again, you deconstruct these. And now at this point, since you've already got this sticking out the front, you can just build your belt because there's nothing else to snap it to. There are ways, um, there are strategies. If you wanted to scooch this Whoa, I just got weirdly stuck right there. So yeah, there, there are methods to scooch this in a little bit. One of them would be building stackable poles um, such that you can kind of connect the top of this a little bit closer and then you go from top to bottom. The problem with that is then deconstructing the stackable poles is hard. So one version, and I'm just telling you this because I think it's a little past the complication level of this series, but you can always go try it at home. Go build a stackable pole blueprint that's, you know, you might as well make it a tall one like this, and you literally just build a blueprint of 10 poles, blueprint it, and then when you place that, you can nudge it kind of through buildings where you wanna go, and then you can deconstruct it by using the blueprint deconstruct mode. Because otherwise, if you build them in the middle of the building, then they might be looking weird and clipping, but you can't actually reach them to deconstruct, which is really funny. So anyway, we connect our belts across to our output, which again, our output could be right here if you really wanted it to be. I like this look, uh, but if you don't, there are alternatives, as always. And that's it. That's really all we gotta do for our inputs and outputs, and the power for this one is pretty easy. Um, what I do is I put it right on the front here, and then you go one, two clicks away. The reason you go two clicks away is otherwise it clips into kind of the front bit of the manufacturer here. So you line it up with the left frame, one, two. Connect those powers, connect these, and connect those. Oh, and before we save it, there's one more thing I almost forgot. We have to take off the end bits, otherwise they tile very oddly. As usual, we don't want these poles overlapping with the poles there when we're tiling them on the end. And I also like to remove these conveyors on the end, because then we can just build straight from one splitter to uh, this connection on the next build. Or we can even remove these you know, if we were to, to tile another one, then we could deconstruct these and just build one belt straight across. The The problem with removing these now is then connecting them up from the world to the build gets a lot messier. And so I like to leave these in, um, but you could always have two versions. You could have the, the primary and then you could have the tilings, which remove this belt as well. 
because then it would be easier to tile from, you know, the back of that merger to the front of this merger with one belt. Um, I do prefer building fewer belt segments where possible. So certainly if you don't mind having lots of extra blueprints, having a primary and then the secondaries would be a reasonable idea. So we'll go ahead and get that one saved again properly this time without those end bits. And we'll go ahead and tile it. Uh, it's gonna be the same as what I've done in my other videos. But just to give you guys an example, if you haven't seen those, you could tile them kind of in a square where you'd build one here and then you'd build the other one next to it like that. And then all the connections would be around the back with a little U bend. But in this case, we'll just tile them in a straight line. I go to blueprint mode and then make sure it's rotated the same way. Often I'll lock it and make sure the nudging's correct. Like in this case, for whatever reason, um, it wants to be further away. So you can nudge it two tiles closer. Now you do have to note that if you nudge it two tiles closer, you're gonna have to um, delete these stackable poles if you don't want the clipping at least. Um, so you could always just build with a one tile gap. Again, it's all about how much space do you want? Do you wanna be perfectly compact? I like to leave these here sometimes cause then I can build more stackables on top and keep building things above this line. So in this case, I'll go with that with the one extra space between the two. But if you don't like the look of that, you are free to do whatever you'd like. I hope I've made that clear. <laughs> if you guys like to play differently than I do, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's also nothing wrong with the way I like to play. You know, there, there's a lot of these things are just preferences. There, there's not a right and wrong. So I just want to make sure you guys understand that there's not, there's nothing wrong with the way you like to do things if it's different. Okay, so anyway, to tile it, we gotta just connect all the belts across to here. So that's three. Now for this fourth one, I'm not a fan of stubby belt segments. Sometimes I get lazy and I put them in anyway, but truly the better way to do it is to deconstruct that one and then come all the way across, which I don't know why it's, oh, it's that one. Um, because then when you go to upgrade, you only have to upgrade one segment. And technically that applies to these two, right? Like it's, if you're not lazy, it's a little better to just have one segment there. Cause then when you go to upgrade, like to a Mark V, you can see it upgrades in one click. So less belt segments tends to be better. So where you can, you know, if you're not feeling lazy, I recommend it. So yeah, and then you just connect those across. We already connected power and that's good to go. We're gonna have four inputs, one output and four manufacturers ready to go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It feels like uh, we're pretty consistent with the way we're building these things. So I hope that you like this style. If you've gotten this far, you probably do. And we're gonna keep going to do blenders and uh, f a four fuel generator build that I'm pretty proud of because it is hard to fit four fuel generators in. Um, and I really like the way it looks. So that'll be coming down the pipeline, quite literally. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for today. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.